Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a, our wellness and our confidence coach here today. He is on our community team, and he also has his own podcast on our show. I'm very excited to have him back today, and he has some great information he wants to share with you to help you in the present tense and in your future. So Alex, it is wonderful to have you back on the show. I'm so excited to hear the, the stuff that you have prepared for us and you have some great information you wanna share with everybody to help improve their lives and get them on a different level of thinking and reacting to things and to kind of to change their overall life and make it better. So how are you been doing and, and tell me what's going on and, and what you really have planned for us today. So well, first of all, good to see you again. It's been a little while. Mm -hmm. um, I've been looking forward to, to doing a few more of these. I enjoy being on your show. Um, as far as today, so we're starting basically a six part mini series. Um, and if anyone listened to or watched our last conversation, we, we touched on the fact that we, as in humans, uh, tend to overcomplicate things and they're not nearly as complicated as we think they are, right? Um, so in the spirit of not overcomplicating things and also the fact that we're all busy, people don't have time. I'm gonna keep these very short because the reality is they don't need to be long. Right. Um, so everything has to start somewhere, right? So I'm gonna start right at the beginning um, and I will start with actually a quote. So this is by Teddy Roosevelt. And normally I have three things behind me. This is the one that sits in the middle, but I've taken it off to read to you guys. Um, and I'm not a fan of paper patriarchy so i'm going to change it slightly it's the man in the arena speech so it'll be the person in the arena um and i'm going to read this quote for a reason just to kind of get people's minds working and then i'll leave it alone and come back to a part of it at the very end so the quote is it is not the critic who counts not the person who points out how the strong person stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the person who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there's no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends him or herself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows at the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he or she fails, at least fails while, while daring greatly, so that his or her place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful speech. I love it. Um, and again, I will leave it until the very end. So what I want to talk about today is aspirations versus quote unquote, living our best life, um, right? So we all have different versions of what our best life is, right? And, and it could be fear of missing out. It could be, you know, we're not fitting in or being accepted. It, it could be pain of mediocrity. Um, it could be pain of regret or fear of future regret. It could be boredom. It could be a million other things, right? So mm -hmm. when, when we talk about living our best life, we're not necessarily talking about being on a boat in the Caribbean and, you know, making videos and, and putting them on Instagram. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's a different thing, right? Um, and I wanted to start with daily affirmations. So I think the, the wellness industry is doing a disservice um everybody loves to post and we all love to read little things today is going to be my day right today the universe is looking out for you today this today that right mm -hmm. or um you know we get up and we go in front of the mirror and we say i'm i'm really strong uh i'm confident um you know and we try to hype, hype ourselves up the problem with those things is that they are in a way we're cheating ourselves because what they are is just small little shots of dopamine, right? 
once that small little shot, shot of dopamine is gone, there's nothing lasting left for us. We're still the same person we were before we read or said this thing. Right. Um, <clears throat> where we can change that is those affirmations work if we base them on facts. Mm -hmm. Right. So let's say uh, I'm fed up with my job. I'm not getting paid enough. And I'm like, okay, enough is enough. I'm going to go look for another job. Right. Right. And, and I go through the steps. I get an interview. Now it's time to go interview. And I'm very nervous. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if we go by the standard daily affirmations, we would get in the mirror or not in the mirror, whatever you think may be and go, okay, I, I can do this. I'm confident. I'm good enough. Blah, blah, blah. Where we actually make that work is if we add because and because is followed by facts. In other words, I'm good enough because. Right. And then we follow it up with something factual, right? Because if we, if we just say I'm good enough, that's very kind of like ethereal conceptual, right? It, it, we know that we're just saying a thing. Yeah. Whereas if we say, I'm good enough because at my last job, I led a project. It was a six month project. There were a lot of people involved. It was very complex. It was mission critical product, blah, 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 whatever. Right. We're, we're now using something factual. Mm -hmm. And because it's factual, it's believable. Right. Right. Because if I just say I'm good enough, I'm walking into that interview going, oh, my God, I'm good enough. I'm good enough. I'm good enough. I'm good enough. And, and I'm stressed out. Whereas if I'm walking in going, you know what? Um, I once worked for 48 hours straight and I groomed 63 dogs. It was a crazy weekend, right? But I did it, right? I, I know how to work. I am competent. So you walk in there with a completely different mindset, which is, I know what I'm doing. I can do this. Yes. Right. That's where we actually make a difference mm -hmm. within ourselves. Right. Is by reminding ourselves those very factual things. Mm -hmm. Right. If you're facing a difficult situation, instead of going, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this, we go, I can do this because. And then you follow it up with something difficult you've been, uh, you've dealt with in the past. Right. right. Now you have factual evidence that you can do this. Mm -hmm. Um, and ultimately, what, what does all this actually mean? Well, it means to get factual evidence that you are whatever you may strive to be. You have to do things. Right. Right. You, you have to have done that 48 hours grooming 63 dogs. Mm -hmm. Right. You have to have done that big project that involved multiple departments. And it was a mission critical product and yada, yada, yada. Right. Right. So the entire point of all this is self-improvement actually, and really it's not just self-improvement. I, I, I think the term self-improvement is a little narrow-minded mm -hmm. because it's actually when you improve yourself, you end up improving your circumstances in life. Yeah. Right. And isn't that the whole point? Mm -hmm. I want to feel good and I want a better life. Yes. Um, you know, when we improve ourselves, when we become confident, it's easier to face fears. It's easier to do things that we normally wouldn't do. Right. Mm -hmm. So doing stuff is what leads to self-improvement. And then the self-improvement itself is what leads to improving our circumstances. Right. Um, <clears throat> and that's kind of the crux of the matter. Getting up every day, you know, going through your Instagram feed and reading, oh, today's going to be my day or, you know, I can do this or whatever. Again, it's a quick little 30 second dopamine shot. Yeah, that's literally all it is. And, and then we're just left with ourselves, our, our exact same situation as we were in before. So we have to actually do stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, doing stuff, uh, I'll do a separate episode on it, but I'll give you guys a hint. 
um, start with little things, right? The goal is to build habits. Mm -hmm. So when I talk about doing stuff, um, I'll use exercise just because it's a really easy one. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not go to the gym for four hours a day, every day for the next two weeks and, you know, just crank out as much as you can, beat the hell out of yourself, turn your life upside down, blah, blah, blah. That, that's not what doing quote unquote stuff means. Right. Right. We're, we're talking about consistency and good habits mm -hmm. and consistency means you can do just a little bit every day. Right. You don't even have to do it every day, five days a week. Right. It's cool. We're all busy. We, we all have off days. You know, I exercise every day except I haven't exercised for three days in a row now. Mm -hmm. I just feel off, right? Something weird happened to the weather in Atlanta. I don't have it in. That's cool. Tomorrow, the next day, I'll be back to normal and I'll go do, go back to doing my stuff. Um, but again, the key is to do stuff. The, the really nice thing about exercise is it's actually, it's almost like a, um, it's almost like cheating. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, because exercise creates serotonin, dopamine, endorphins, um, all kinds of good stuff. And by the way, if if you're not motivated, dopamine helps with motivation. Mm. So if you just want free motivation out of thin air, start exercising. Right. Uh, right, exercise reduces depression, frustration, fatigue, anxiety. It relieves pain. It calms fears. Uh, it increases confidence. That there's a million good things it does. So you can get all these things for free. Yeah, just by being active. Right. Right. And again, being active doesn't mean go kill yourself. Yeah. Um, when I work with clients, they start with a 20 minute walk a day. Mm -hmm. that's it that's it you're you're done 20 minute walk you're cool we'll slowly build up from there but that's how it starts yes right um so yeah i'm gonna leave it at that i told you guys this is gonna be really short i'm not gonna waste your time i'm just gonna give you what matters so start thinking about you know your affirmations whether they're morning midday whatever as needed Find factual evidence in your life to support those affirmations. Mm -hmm. um, I'll give you a simple example. The other day, I talked to someone who's former military. Um, they spent 13 years in the military. Uh, I won't get political about this. I'm an I'm a anti-war person, but that doesn't matter, right? Because in their case, whether regardless of political things, this is something they've been through, right? Right. And this person was having difficulties. And what I said was, OK. If you're talking about being good enough. Having confidence, having some confidence that you're able to do things that you can go through difficult things. We simply have to look at the fact that you've been in the military for 13 years. Right. Right. You've been to Iraq. You've been to this. You've been to that. You've done very difficult things. Mm -hmm. Not only have you done very difficult things you've done something that the vast majority of people don't do. Right. Right. You made a commitment that should my country need me, I will be there. I am making this commitment. That's a big time commitment. Mm -hmm. Right. Because that's a, you know, if, if things go south, that's literally a life or death commitment. Right. Right. For, so for that person, their daily affirmations now includes that part which is mm -hmm. hold on i am enough i am capable i do know how to go through difficult things right and i know all this because mm -hmm. right um but you don't even have to be that extreme right you can have an average normal life where everything is relatively cool and you just want better well you know what have you have you been to college if you've been to college that's something you can look at right 
right? Like, hold on, I, I dedicated four years. Mm -hmm. I, I studied for tests, I studied for quizzes, I, I did this, I did that, right? This is evidence that I am capable. Right. You know, if you don't have a college degree, maybe you're working at a warehouse. Well, guess what? I'm there every week, busting my butt. What does that mean? It means I'm consistent. I'm reliable. I'm capable. I'm competent. It means a lot of things, right? Yeah. We, we, we have a, for whatever reason, we have a difficult time um, valuing our accomplishments, right? We value everybody else's accomplishments. Oh, look at what so-and-so did. No, no, hold on. Look at what you did. Right. Um, but for whatever reason that I still haven't quite figured out, we have a very difficult time valuing our own accomplishments. Um, right. It's likely because ultimately we are our biggest critics. So, <laughs> so yeah, I, I assume that's where it comes from. <clears throat> um and right before we end, I'm going to go back to, I told you I'd go back to the quote, and I'm going to go back to the last sentence, which is, um, and who at the worst, if he or she fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his or her place shall never be with those cold, timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat, mm -hmm. right? Right. The point with that is when you're doing whatever you're doing, right? Because we have to do in order to uh, to achieve those things that we aspire to and, and, and that we affirm to ourselves. Right. We don't actually have to succeed. Right. It's nice to succeed, mm -hmm. but we don't have to. Right. Right. Um, I'll give you a clue. If failure was a bad thing, we would still be living in caves. Right. So uh, the last time you and I spoke, I mentioned I'm a, I'm a former engineer. I have a couple of engineering degrees, blah, 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 blah. In engineering, literally everything is a failure except for that la very last iteration. Yeah. Right. We start with something. We start with the idea. We put something together. The likelihood that it's going to work the first time is virtually zero. Mm -hmm. Right. We, we put it together and we see what happens. And the goal really never is to watch it work. The goal is to right. see what breaks and why. Right. Right. So if we, if we transpose that on what we as individuals do through life, oh, that's a failure. <laughs> right. I fail. Oh, my God. Everything is terrible. No, it's not. You do it. You see what went wrong. Then you go back and fix it and you do it again. Right. Right. And you keep doing that until you do succeed. Mm -hmm. Right. If we all stopped at the failure again, we would be living in caves mm -hmm. because no nothing would be built, imagined, designed, brought to reality. Right. Because everything fails until you get it right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the, the two things are the, that I'd like to leave everybody with today are when you do your affirmations, use real facts of stuff you have done, right? Use evidence to support whatever it is you're affirming. And the other thing is do stuff. Yes. And next time I'll, I'll talk more about doing stuff. I so it. that's it. Thank you for your time. Oh, you're very, thank you so much for coming on the show and, and bring this up. And before we go, can you just tell everybody your services, just tell them what you do and, and how they can, you know, maybe contact you because, you know, you are an amazing wellness coach and confidence coach. And I'd love for you to like, you know, maybe explain to everybody your services and where they can find you. Sure. They can find me on superself.me. That's my website. Uh, they can book through there. They can contact me, whatever they may want to do. They can sign up to a newsletter. Um, where the newsletter is in essence, everything I do for free, mm -hmm. it's just not, you know, geared to an individual because uh, obviously, unless I know you and what you're struggling with, then there's nothing I can do. Right. Um, my services, it's a, it's a 10 week program mm -hmm. and really what, what it's focused on is building positive habits and practical problem solving. 
right? So my goal is that I get you used to doing things that are good for you. Right. Once you're used to it, it doesn't take a year. It doesn't take two years. Once you're used to it, you know, you can go do your thing. Um, obviously people are different. Some people prefer to continue working with me. Um, others don't, whatever, but, but my goal with the program is let's figure out what positive habits look like. Right. Let's address your current challenges and see how we can practically solve them. Yes. Um, which that in itself kind of helps with, um, problem solving in general. Mm -hmm. Right, you get an idea of how to break down complex problems and and what the priorities look like and where you should you should start and things like that. Um, we also talk about cognitive reframing, which mm -hmm. just fancy word for changing your perspective. Mm -hmm. um, I'll go into that in the future, uh, in future episodes. But yeah, that's uh, that's basically the program. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been amazing. I love that, you know, you really, you know, touch base on affirmations and the importance of really, you know, focusing on different things to really inspire you, not looking at a, at a phone and just looking at some, you know, Monday motivation, but really yep. thinking about what you could do in your own life to really create that yep. dopamine and to create that motivation within yourself. So I really, I really like that a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a great day. You too.